Day 321. Today there is some bad news. While the Ukrainians inside Solodar continue to hold their defense, Ukrainian flanks around Solodar have gradually been compromised. Russian attacks to the north and south of Solodar started out wide and distant from the city, but over the last two days they have been steadily closing in. Russian fire recently started to impede the Ukrainian rotation process and it also allowed the Russians to open more lines of attack. Preserving control over the main defensive positions inside the city can rapidly become useless, and here is why. Last time I told you that while the Ukrainians have focused on the northern and southern parts of the settlement, the Russians have attacked them right in the center. It was unclear at first how the Russians managed to do it, because the Ukrainians should have been controlling the eastern area. Previously, the fights have been consistently reported to happen on the Tolstoy and Chernyshevskova streets, marking the presence of Ukrainian forces. The lack of updates from this region prompted most sources to assume that the Ukrainians quietly stepped back, because even Russian sources assumed these positions without any claims of breaching Ukrainian defenses. This perfectly explains how the Russians managed to conduct an attack in the center, and this also means that the Ukrainians were not able to withstand the tempo of Russian advances. And today, the spokesperson for the eastern group of forces explained how it happened. He said that almost all Wagner units had been relocated to Storm Solidar, which made it the most intense area on the entire front, much more intense than even Bakhmut. He said that the Wagners had switched to using the tactics from the First World War, where they just tried to overwhelm the enemies with the sheer number of infantry. Some people have been skeptical about it because it is a private military company that cannot expand their professional personnel in this way. But this is where the rules of the game have recently changed, because the head of the Wagner forces, Prigozhin, has recruited more than 40,000 Russian prisoners. These prisoners are obviously not professional fighters, and they are treated to a large extent as expendable resources. The prisoners are used by the professional forces as cannon fodder, to overwhelm the Ukrainians and also find weak spots. Today Ukrainian reserve officer and analyst described in detail how the Wagners in Solodar actually work. They sent several small squads of prisoners, up to 8 people, to storm multiple targets along the perimeter of the city. Once the first wave is dead, they adjust the targets and send the second one. Once any group achieves success and reaches the target, the Wagners know that the prisoners have found a weak spot and finally deploy their professional units to develop the attack further. This is exactly how the Russians managed to get a toehold in the northern part of the city, which they still maintain because they deployed professional forces. And this is exactly how they managed to enter the central part of the city. Unfortunately, today's videos of fights suggest that the Wagners managed to develop their success inside the town. Such a dangerous development of the situation put some Ukrainian units in Artyom's soul into a salient and forced them to retreat towards the salt mines. So the fights are once again happening near the entrances to the salt mines. One of the reasons why the Russians were able to conduct the attacks along the perimeter of the city in the first place is that the Ukrainians seem to have failed to protect their flanks. Several days ago I told you about the imminent Russian attack on the Ukrainian flanks concluding that the main focus of the Ukrainians likely needs to be reinforcing the flanks and making sure that the Russians cannot breach them. Even though the Russians failed to develop their offensive in Rozdolyevka as they initially planned, by constantly attacking other settlements on the line, they managed to immobilize Ukrainian troops in Krasnopolivka, Sil Station, Krasnogora and Pidhorodnya. Russian sources even claim that they have already entered the latter two. In these conditions, conducting rotation becomes risky, as the Russians control some segments of the roads. As of now, the Ukrainians are still controlling the salt mines and high-rise buildings in Solodar, which are the main defense positions, and they also control everything west of the railways. If the Ukrainians manage to conduct a series of counterattacks and reduce Russian fire control over the region, then the Russians will lose the ability to send troops to Solodar from every direction and the Wagners will not be able to sustain their attack. If not, then controlling defensive positions in Solidar becomes useless, as the Russians are cutting too deep into the Ukrainian flanks. Many sources say that the next 24 hours are decisive, 
so we will see what the Ukrainian command decides to do. If you're against the invasion of Ukraine and you want to support the work that I'm doing, consider making a purchase in the online store UA Supporter. Here you can find a lot of products with Ukrainian symbols to not only show your support for this channel, but also for Ukraine. The link to the online store is in the description. Thank you for watching, and I will see you in the next report.